here. Huh? Back at like it. Like a good habit. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. Yeah. So, hey, um, I saw this in the conversation, but this was one of the ones I was curious to know. Um, the Europeans enslaved Native Americans. You so that, that that's what you don't really don't hear. You hear about like Native Americans already being on, on American lands, but you don't hear about where they any enslaved. But you would see them like during Thanksgiving or the whatever Thanksgiving, they were with the, the pilgrims. You know, it was some with the pilgrims. But um, so look, I'm curious to see. I'm curious, and I mean like with them like chilling. You know, not like enslaved. In 1986, the United Nations has marked December 2nd as the International Day for the Abolition of Slavery. This date reflects the adoption of a UN Convention on December 2nd, 1949, which sought to address human trafficking, especially of women and children. People observe this day to bring attention to the atrocities of modern day systems of enslavement in order to one day eradicate its contemporary forms. Though not legally defined, modern systems of enslavement include forced labor, debt bondage, forced marriage, and human trafficking. Currently, over 40 million people are enslaved across the globe. Roughly 62% of these people are held in conditions of forced labor like domestic work, agricultural work, or construction. The remaining 38% are being held in forced marriages. Mm. When many of us think about the term enslavement, mm -hmm. at least in the United States, we often imagine the transatlantic slave trade, right. the enslavement of Africans and its lasting consequences. Mm -hmm. In truth, enslavement existed in many forms alongside the peculiar institution of chattel enslavement and contemporary forms that continue until now. For more information, we have a playlist of videos that also addresses this topic. In The Other Slavery, The Uncovered Story of Indian Enslavement in America, historian Andres Resendez argues that modern enslavement is a direct legacy of systems created to enslave indigenous peoples of the Americas from the earliest stages of colonialism. Mm -hmm. Yes, I mean since 1492. Understanding why the enslavement of indigenous peoples is often overlooked can give us some insights into how these legacies continue in old and new ways. Practices of enslavement did not spontaneously develop in 1619, when the first 20 odd enslaved Africans were trafficked onto the shores of the future United States. 20. And they weren't even geographically anchored to North America. In our episode, Why Did Europeans Enslave Africans? We go into detail about the pre-colonial systems of enslavement. But here's a brief recap. Tribal warfare and pillaging in the Americas, Africa, and Europe often resulted in the capture of members of conquered tribes. Victors would often hold captives for cultural reasons or as forms of population augmentation, as noted by historian Elena E. Roberts. In the Americas, the Iroquois captured members of neighboring tribes in mourning wars to replace deceased members of their own communities. Elites within the tribes of the Pacific Northwest gifted enslaved captives as part of marriage dowries, and Aztecs, Mayas, and Zapotecs frequently used captives for sacrificial religious practices. Mm. Make no mistake, these practices could be traumatizing for captives, as tribes like the Comanche and the tribes living in the paid and hot region of North America would practice forms of torture and what historian Brett Rushford calls natal alienation in order to strip away their captives' former identities, lives, and connections to their natal tribes. So before the- Wait, so they're saying that they would kill the, the, the Indian that was held captive and got free, and then because- they felt like he was a disgrace or something? Or they I didn't hear like anything about captive being free. I heard her talking about how they were um, in their own tribes to wipe what their history and stuff was, whatever they, but just, I'm just here thinking about my mind was still perseverating on the fact of what they were doing to the captives, like a sacrifice. That's kind of like too much. But I'm 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 like we should get get to the point of the Europeans mm -hmm. enslaving. Keep listening. Acceleration so. of European colonization and expansion, being enslaved or being an enslaver depended on advantage and happenstance. For millennia, whether you were on the victor side or not in war or battle, or even if you were unlucky enough to be captured during a raid on your community, meant that almost anyone could be on either side of that dynamic. But this new form of conquest changed all that. 
Earlier indigenous cultural practices, though potentially torturous and brutal, were at least not inherited by your descendants and limited the circulation of the enslaved within the geographical Ooh, bounds of the enslaving tribe. Soon, European colonization and enslavement would shift towards a profit motive that commodified and circulated bodies on a global scale. Enslavement also became less about unlucky circumstances and more about what you looked like. This new form of enslavement developed fairly soon after the advent of early colonial conquest. Colonization refers to the actual practices set out to achieve colonial goals. And these practices are brutal processes of subjugation, dispossession, and expropriation of territories and peoples in the name of expansion, imperial reach, and profit. Christopher Columbus sent around 550 enslaved indigenous peoples from the Americas to Europe as some of the first commodities shipped back with the purpose of putting them on the market to be sold as laborers in the Mediterranean. Eventually, other European powers, including the Dutch, French, English, and Portuguese, began participating in this trade, trafficking unwilling peoples as laboring bodies. Portugal, and eventually England, would come to dominate the trafficking of Africans for the purpose of this new form of enslavement. Spain and its conquistadores, Spanish for conquerors, were early beneficiaries of their enslavement of indigenous peoples in the Americas. Spain soon implemented a labor system called encomienda in their colonies in the Americas and in the Philippines. Encomienda derives from the Spanish encomendar, which roughly translates as to entrust or to commend. The system was intended to redefine the relationship between settlers and the captive native laborers who were to be treated as new Spanish subjects. This system would civilize new subjects in a twisted attempt at benevolence and was thought to simultaneously quell potential uprisings from newly empowered and too distant colonial settlers. In the encomienda system, the crown would grant conquistadors or prominent aristocrats plots of land and set numbers of captured natives in each new Spanish settlement. These grant holders, or encomenderos, were responsible for managing native labor, often with restrictions meant to reduce already mounting abuses. As a price for protection and acknowledgement of defeat, encomenderos would demand tributes from their captives. 20% of these tributes were to be collected by the crown. Tributes could include goods and services like crops, mined minerals and precious metals, currencies, sexual acts, and of course, their involuntary labor. In exchange for these tributes, the crown and their encomenderos would offer forced conversion and religious education in Catholicism, along with protection. What was initially proposed as a beneficial system for those new subjects quickly turned cruel and exploitative. Enslavement by another name. Encomenderos, unsure of the length of their tenure in power, swiftly began forcing their captives to labor under brutal conditions. Exposure to European disease for the ravaged indigenous tribes and societies, greatly reducing populations. Encomenderos were not to live within the settlements they controlled, so natives were forced to walk grueling lengths to pay their tributes, often carrying heavy and cumbersome offerings. One such encomendero, Bartolome de las Casas, experienced the cruelty in the New World firsthand. He eventually wrote the illustrated book, A Short Account of the Destruction of the Indies, in 1542. Upon its release, the book caused an uproar and he campaigned for better treatment of native peoples. By November of that year, King Charles I of Spain, grandson of King Ferdinand and Queen Isabella, issued the new laws of the Indies for the good treatment and preservation of the Indians. These new laws stated that all natives be freed immediately, or at least within one generation, and that they be paid fair wages in exchange for their labor. Hmm. Encomienda trust would also be canceled upon the death of the encomendero, and the land would not be bequeathed to their heirs. Rather, the rights were to be relinquished back to the crown. Non-compliance of wealthy and powerful colonists was common, and many of the laws were not enforced in fear of rebellion. Eventually, continued spread of disease further dwindled the native populations, while beneficiaries of the encomienda system continued to exploit the survivors. As encomenderos realized their positions would be short-lived, they continued to work the natives to death in hopes of gaining wealth quickly. The Spanish were extraordinarily successful at garnering extravagant levels of wealth for the empire. In Latin America and the Caribbean, the enforcement of involuntary labors of natives, who had been enslaved in every way except in name, continued rapaciously. But dwindled populations of native tribes meant that the English had a smaller pool of potential captives and settlers found themselves at a disadvantage. 
Tribes native to the eastern seaboard had the ability to fight on their own turf and garner support from nearby allies in battle. Mm. Nevertheless, the English exploited Native American groups. According to historian Alan Gillet, from 1670 to 1715, more Native Americans were exported to slavery from Charleston, South Carolina, than Africans were imported. Mm. But that soon waned due to a more lucrative endeavor, trafficking of African captives to use for free labor, which replaced Natives and white Europeans as go-to indentured servants. Mm. However, the enslavement of indigenous people still occurred. It just happened more surreptitiously, mm. often carried out in such a way that it did not look like enslavement. Oh. Because of the formal legalization of enslaved Africans, we have archival material like bills of sale, taxation at ports of entry, wills, and sometimes even glimpses of their lives. Mm. Not technically enslaved, indigenous captives were rarely documented, so there's little historical evidence of their existence or conditions. Over the next two centuries, tribal encounters with colonial forces not only shifted the nature of enslavement practices, but also expanded its scale. In the Americas, European encroachment offset existing power dynamics among tribes and even incentivized them to capture people from nearby tribes for the purposes of human trafficking and enslavement. As settlers and tribes people began to commingle, tribal leaders often looked to legal forms of chattel enslavement of Africans and illegal means of enslaving people from other tribes. Sometimes tribal leaders participated to prove their civility and ability to assimilate. Close contact and intermarriage often meant that tribal leaders and elites were related to nearby settler officials and truly believed in assimilation. Oh, they were getting hitched. Other forms of assimilation, like conversion to Christianity and education in settler schools, only helped to rationalize and encourage participation in trafficking and enslavement. Yet still for others, tribes participated begrudgingly only as a last means of survival, as gambits to prevent collapse or unwanted conflict with federal forces. In the southeast of North America, five civilized tribes participated in systems of chattel enslavement of Africans and their descendants. These tribes included the Seminole, the Choctaw, the Cherokee, the Creek, and the Chickasaw. As they were forced from their land in the 1830s, they walked with their enslaved chattel from their land in the southeast to what is now the state of Oklahoma. Hmm. Abolition of the slave trade in the United States did not mean that the system was abolished worldwide. In fact, abolition of enslaved people of African descent living under the five tribes would not be carried out until a year after the 13th Amendment was ratified in the United States. The treaties of 1866 emancipated the enslaved and eased conflict between the United States and the tribal sovereignties. Though Brazil was the last nation in the Americas to abolish legal enslavement in 1888, other forms continued to exist. So why is Native American enslavement so often overlooked? As is the case with many historical legacies, it's complicated. Because enslavement of indigenous peoples coincided with early colonial endeavors and were quickly outlawed, settlers found new ways to force involuntary labor by other means, often in the name of civilizing them. This illegal status leaves the historical record lacking. What we do know paints a complicated portrait. Indigenous tribes in the Americas could at times be the enslaved as well as enslavers, or be the enslaved and become the enslavers at a later time, or vice versa, mm. all depending on the circumstances and happenstance of colonial encounter with European settlers. For now, we should take some time not to look back as a means of comparing relative experiences and endurances of suffering by different peoples and their descendants. Recognizing the generational consequences of these traumatic events is important and necessary work, but we should also realize that systems exist and existed that warrant unimaginable cruelty and anguish. It is in our power as historians to recognize those systems, their origins and legacies, and work towards liberation for all. Okay, so to answer the question, so they would, so she She's, didn't mention the fact, and I want to say this before I forget, she didn't mention the fact of, you know, about the Africans enslaving, you know, each other and the slave trade starting there and how they were sending off trading Africans to send overseas, you know, and that's a big part. You know, people skip over that when they're talking about, you know, slavery, slavery. But this answers a question about were Native Americans enslaved, because I think we either we were talking were we talking about this on the live with some of our um squad um i don't remember okay 
but i remember this question coming up so this is good to know because we were just thinking that they well i I don't know about you i was thinking that they were able to either defend themselves and leave or some of them were many of them were killed in Mm -hmm. the battle and now we know that they were enslaved but it don't based on how she described it it seemed like it was it felt like it was a very small amount based on how she described it it didn't sound like it was a massive system with with the with um indians that just just based on how she was describing it. not to me feel? no i felt like it was you know i don't know if it was as many africans that um as if the number was no. as large as Africans, however, but it sounded like a great number of them being enslaved, mistreated, you know, killed, slaughtered, sacrificed. It's like sacrifice. What, what is all of that? That's but something it, but new. It, but it looked like the Indians were sacrificing other Indians or slaughtering other. Indians. But it was also the uh, um, the British or whoever the other uh, colonials that were over there were doing it also as part of their religious practices Thanks. yeah that was gross but they were marrying um indians too yeah that was the last part you were talking about that that's when, that's when they started being assimilated assimilation yeah this was this was quite interesting it was i mean yeah i might look at another i want to look at another video on this because how she explains it it was given in i don't know it, i guess i was looking for something else um but I under, understand yeah. that it did answer a question, but I still was looking for something else. This, I, I would guess, like to I guess because it's PBS, so you're not gonna get the raw. I mean, you'll get the raw, but it's gonna. Be... Yeah, I, I guess my expectation was was a little bit different too. I guess because now I know the facts. I look for people to start off with how it actually started and yeah. how, yeah, you know, it was a a common practice, yeah. and to and the way she was describing it made it seem as though it was something that was brutally done over the Americas and the other parts of the world, where you know, whereas it was you know a common practice all over. Yeah. See, and I don't like when um, people go out and like like, you know, I mean she she she's good on her knowledge, you know, like she did she spoke her thing, but. You know, I don't like how things are missed out because then this goes back to some of how we learn as kids that the, some of the real things that you really need to learn about it, they wouldn't teach you because they want you to feel a certain way. So I, I don't know, just kind of kind of stuff they they roll the TV into the classroom and show you back when you were young. But um, yeah, this makes us this makes me want to look up look this up a little bit further. I want to do another video yeah. on this. Me too. Yeah. All right, y'all. Like, comment, subscribe. Don't take a nose by. Don't take a nose dive, But comment down in the section below, below if you want some more. And if you and if you all have any video recommendations in regards to Native Americans, you know, being enslaved, then recommend us. You know that down in the comment section. But not a PBS one. <laughs> not a PBS one. Yeah, something that's just going to give you a little bit it. more. I have to think about it. Look, remember. Roots, Kuta Kente, and then next you know he was on PBS. Stop it. I don't know why. Something that's gonna, it's gonna, that is going to be a little bit more, you know, rustic with the truth or a little bit more, you know, yeah. I don't know if rustic is the word, but you all know what I'm saying. Yeah. I do. I do. And yeah. I know exactly what I'm saying. Something that's more hard truth, not this. Everybody feels, you know, PBS. All right. Love you guys. See you on the next video. Appreciate you. You know we're going for 75k. You were just on. Oh, and then take a look. Is it a book? It's reading rainbow. Stop it! Stop it! <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. See y'all the next one. Love you guys.